Could the middleweight title picture be any more insane? I shout like I'm Chandler Bing. It looked like Izzy was going to be the next Anderson, and then he got KO'd by Poetan, then he KO'd Poetan back, then Sean Strickland came out of nowhere and took the strap from Izzy, and Canada loved him, and now DDP is the champ, but did he even win? The media is split, White thinks Strickland won, all of this has happened since 2022, and my head is spinning. Let's try to sort this out. I'm Tommy from MMA On Point. A massive thank you to our channel Hall of Famers, and what do we do now with the middleweight title? Before we can even fathom trying to answer that damn question, or even who won the main event, we need to talk about what exactly it is that did happen at UFC 297, so let's run this thing down. Drickus Duplessis took the middleweight title to become the first South African UFC champ after earning a split decision over Sean Strickland in a banger. Rocky Pennington took Myra Bueno Silva to a decision in a real grinder to earn the vacant bantamweight title. Neil Magny in a stunner TKO'd favorite Mike Malott in the last 15 seconds of the fight. Chris Curtis got back in the win column with a decision decision victory over Marc-Andre Barrio, and to kick off the main card, Mopsar Ivoyev somewhat controversially handed Arnold Allen his second ever UFC loss via UD. The prelims had some bangers on them and a lot of fun subs early, definitely worth going back through it, I honestly think it trumped the main card. Alright, so we're all on the same page now, right? How about we run the numbers though on this thing and see if that gives us any more perspective. The first UFC card in Toronto since 2018 saw 12 fights with 2 KO TKOs, 3 subs, 7 decisions for a total cage time of 2 hours hours 50 minutes 38 seconds. It was a night for the dogs, only 5 favorites would come out on top with 7 unders prevailing. Neil Magny's third round TKO was a plus 3500 outcome, that is some good money right there if you can get it. That was only the second decision fight period in DDP's entire 23 bout career, it was also the most significant strikes he's ever landed with 137, no shocker there. That was the most takedowns on Strickland in a fight in his career with 6. In both of his 5 round split decision losses, Sean had a larger total strike count. Rocky Pennington is 8-1 in her last 9, and has only ever lost to former UFC title holders. This was Magny's 5th opponent in 6 bouts with 3 or less career losses, dude has been through the ringer. That was his first TKO victory since 2018 against Craig White, and this is his 11th year in the UFC, earning him our He Still Got It award. Fans were not happy with the fight, but there were 507 shots total thrown, as well as the most significant strikes Chris Curtis has ever landed in a bout with 140. Have attempted more takedowns against Allen than his last seven UFC opponents combined with 17. He was only successful on five, though. That is his eighth straight decision victory in the UFC, earning him our Dom Cruz Award, because I got the jokes today. But the stats really only tell us a part of the story. Let's talk about what really happened. And by what really happened, I mean let's get into the weeds of that title fight. So, who is it that won? The media that turned in scores for MMA decisions had it 12 scorecards to 10 in favor of DDP. In other words, words, they were pretty much split 50-50 on who won. Of course, Strickland himself expressed in his post-fight interview that he felt he won as well, which, you know, don't all fighters think that. Dana threw his two cents in at the presser and said he had a 2-2 going into the fifth, and then gave the final round to Strickland. Of course, stats never tell the full picture, but Sean did outland DDP in four of the five rounds, but not all strikes are created equal, of course, and damage is taken into account as well as a whole host of other things. Every judge scored every round but the third identically, with the dissenting Saul Diamato giving it to Strickland, and thus creating the split. Look, the criteria isn't perfect, my inclination going to the cards was that Duplessis had pulled it off, but the argument for Strickland is very strong as well. It's just the nature of close fights in mixed martial arts. Both guys fought well, and it was a close fight. This doesn't feel like a robbery, this doesn't feel like a fight that immediately needs to be set back up to right some wrong. White even said at the presser that they won't be running this one back right away, which does say a lot considering he doesn't think Strickland lost. What is clear here is two things. One, Sean proved that his position as a champion was no fluke, he's clearly in the top tier, he has an insanely effective jab, he's one of the best defensive fighters in the division, he's incredibly well coached, and he just seems hard for most to crack. The other thing is that this division is a hot ass mess, and I don't mean to say that as if it's a bad thing, it's just quite a bit all over the place at the very top. With all respect to DDP, of course, because he absolutely earned that belt, the thing has been playing hot potato so much in the last two years, it's going to take quite a bit for any champion 
champion to really establish themselves. Strickland had a chance last night to do that somewhat, but of course fell short and now has to go back in line because we got all kinds of what's next to talk about here. First and foremost, since Adesanya tricked us all about staying away from the sport for seven years or whatever he said, how stupid of us to believe his own words he said about something, now is 100% the time to make that fight with him and DDP. Izzy's championship run warrants skipping the line. And let's be honest, the line is more of a huddle of random contenders. There's not much in the way of order. Not to mention, we have no guarantee that this championship hot potato won't continue if they do throw in someone else for Drickus, which is why you have to do style bender before anything else. Weirdly, it sounds like Dana and DDP are up for a potential middleweight title fight at UFC 300, something that Hamzat hinted at too, which man, that's a risky venture there. If they do Izzy at 300, why? Why not wait for a UFC Africa card? I mean, that would be the biggest thing ever. Dana even said he could see them doing a card there with Duplessis. Those two would fill a stadium easily. There's already a lot of contention around Chimaev even getting into the title picture potentially with a win over Usman on short notice up a weight class. So if they go in that direction and he beats DDP, the middleweight title picture gets even messier. And now you've lost the hook for that huge Izzy fight. I have no idea what they're going to do, but it does sound like we might be finding out only days after this video goes live. All right, enough about that hot ass mess at 185 though. Let's talk about Rocky Pennington bantamweight champion. Look, there was always going to be a massive void after Nunez left the division and most all of the younger talent has migrated to 125 anyway. Something that tends to happen when you have an unbeatable champion from UFC 200 to nearly UFC 300. Yes, that fight was not good in terms of entertainment value. And yes, it didn't do much at all to set the tone for the division going forward. But I will say I always love seeing an OG get a belt and Rocky has been at this for over a decade to go from that brutal loss to Nunez to this victory, which I don't think many expected her to have. I was excited for her. You can never take that away. And it looks like Pena will be next. That said, whoever's going to do it, the division needs a serious shot in the arm, and I truly do not know where that's going to come from at the moment. All right, now that we've covered the big stuff, it's time to wrap up some 297 odds and ends. Neil Magny, man, massive upset win over rising star Mike Malott. What can you say? I'll tell you what you can say. Don't sleep on crafty vets. If you give him a chance, he's going to take you out, and he serves an incredible role at welterweight of weeding out talent. Not to say that Malott is done or anything, but yeah, man, Neil Magny, that dude will get you. A bit of controversy in the Arnold Allen loss. Not enough, of course, to warrant a rematch, I would assume. It just is what it is. Arnold is clearly top tier, but is going to be forced to fight his way back into the top five. And as for Ivoyev, I'm not quite sure he cracks that upper tier, especially with the title contender Taporia at five, but he's definitely in the mix and you just never know what people are going to do with those rankings. Overall, 297 was not a great card. Not on paper, not in reality. We did have a great main event, which does go a long way of course, but the co-main event really dragged things down before that, and prior they weren't exactly in a great place anyway, minus that Magni upset. This card felt a bit like it probably served the purpose of saving bigger fights for 299 and 300, so maybe slogging through this one last night will have paid off in the spring. I guess we'll see. That said, we're back on the pay-per-view grind, baby. Massive one next with Volk and Ilya, and if all things go well, the rest of this year looks to be building pretty awesomely. Who do you think won the main event though? What do you think they should do with the middle Wait, title picture. Sound off in the comments below. One of the reasons we get these out so fast is so that you have a bit of a forum to discuss major events right after they happen, and I love reading all the discussion in the comments. I truly do read every one. A massive thank you to Max Randall for the edit on this one. Does an incredible job on basically zero sleep. Follow his socials and his awesome YouTube channel. Thank you to our channel champions for all they do. You can become one yourself by hitting the join button. Liking and subscribing would be really appreciated too, and thanks so much for watching, guys. I will catch you at 298.